Hi, I'm Vic Perry and welcome to another edition of Face to Face. Our guest tonight is Michael Boucher. And Michael Boucher is from the new, quite a relatively new organisation called Behind Rainbow Eyes. Welcome to the program, Michael. Thank you. Now, I have to ask you first, how old are you? I'm 17. So 17. So you're uh, pretty young for a, a, a guy who's just coming out, yep. or just dealing with your sexuality. And what's Rainbow or Behind Rainbow Eyes all about? Um, we're about uh, providing not only support for same-sex attracted youth around the country, but um, promoting acceptance and awareness that they do exist in the community. Mm. And how do you find it the, uh, today? Is, is it something that's uh, quite a difficult thing to do for, for people to uh, uh, deal with their sexuality, particularly at a, a young age? Um, well, they say it's getting easier, and obviously I don't know because I wasn't coming out years ago. Mm. but it does seem fairly easy to come out, um, particularly in school. Um, mm. I think it is getting easier, as they say. And, and easier in, in what sense? Easier in terms of uh, fellow uh, students or with teachers, like the school system? Is it easier overall? Um, well, I think mainly with fellow students, there's a lot more acceptance, but there still is an issue that does need to be addressed. Mm. It's still something that um, definitely lies in the back of my mind mm. when I'm at school, um, you know, whether someone knows and if they don't know what they're going to do when they find out. <laughs> mm. Mm. Uh, of course, that's always on it. It doesn't matter, I suppose, what age people are. It's always something yeah. that uh, you need to think about when you do disclose a, a sexuality. Yeah. Um, what, what about the teachers? Are you, or how out are you at school? Um, well, just to my close friends mm. and um, one of my teachers. Mm. And what sort of reaction did you, did you get when you um, told them? Um, well, one of my close friends is actually gay as well. Um, and he was already out, so it wasn't really a problem for me to come out to my friends at all. Did, did your friend have a hard time? Um, well, he came out to the whole school when he mm. came out. Mm. Um, and he had a hard time from people who weren't his friends. But uh, mm. from our friends, it's not a problem at all. And with your school, I suppose, generally it doesn't seem too bad. What, what, what about other schools? Do you get a sense of what it's like at other uh, schools? Um, I think other schools are pretty much the same. You know, there are out people and um, they don't have too much of a problem. You're always going to get the odd few that are, um, are not willing to accept that same-sex attracted youth exist at all and um, will do whatever they can to... <laughs> make life difficult mm. but um, overall I think it is getting a bit easier. Mm. Do, you, do you talk to older people and, and sort of talk to them about what it was like for them to come out 10, 20, 30 years ago so you get that sort of uh, broad perspective? Um, well I have spoken to a few people and they said that when they were in school you know 20 years ago mm. that it would be sort of unheard of to come out mm. in school. Um, they w couldn't imagine the consequences of that so Mm. And what about the, the system itself, the, the school system? Do, do you, is there anything actually happening at, at policy level? Uh, uh, is the government doing anything to uh, uh, sort of from the top down uh, to create a, an environment where it can be easier? Um, I think they are doing something. Whether they're doing enough is another question. Mm. Um, <laughs> there's um, a CD that's been produced um, by the, uh, the Eastern Action Group it's called um, Same Sex Attracted People at School. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's about teachers and students as well. Yep. Um, the information on that is actually at our website where you can contact the Eastern Action Group okay. for details yep. on that. Um, it's got a lot of activities to be done in school mm -hmm. for teachers to use and um, just for anyone who's um, wanting information on what it's like mm. um, for teachers to come out at school and for students to come out at school. 
And I was going to ask you about teachers. That's, that's another side of it, I suppose. Yeah. It's one thing for, for someone as young as yourself to, to think about how to deal with uh, your own sexuality and how to come out uh, to your students and teachers. What about teachers? How easy it is, is it for teachers to, uh, to come out? Um, well, I'm not a teacher, so I don't really know. No. But th we do have a teacher at our school who is, well, I wouldn't say that she's out, but all, all the students at least um, have guessed. Mm. <laughs> and um, but no one gives her a hard time or, or mm. anything. It's nothing, mm. it's not a drama. So do, you, do you think the school itself like, the, w would have I think a problem with it? Or like no, the system? Or? Well, our school, particularly the environment around our school is um, it's a fairly friendly environment. Mm. Um, but I think at some other schools there, there may be a problem within the staff that uh, could prevent someone from coming out easily. Mm -hmm. And what about your family? Is there a, a <laughs> immediate family and, and your extended family? Um, I'm not out to my family, so... You're not? No. <laughs> okay. Um, if anyone's watching, <laughs> um, you might be now. But, uh, well, if something like they found out, what, what do you think would happen? Um, I think they'd be fine with it. It's just, be okay? it's yeah. just bringing yourself to tell them is the issue. Mm. Um, but yeah, I don't see, see that there would be a problem there at all. And that's a common thing. It it's probably wouldn't be a problem and they'd be fine. It's just the actual action of saying yeah, something exactly. to them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and what about sort of looking at a, a broader perspective? Uh, uh, there's a, a big concern at the moment with, um, uh, particularly in the queer community with uh, uh, there's uh, this perception that there's this rise of, of a conservative element in, in society as well as in politics. And uh, there's this fear that it's going to get harder for uh, people to, uh, well, not just to come out, but for gays and lesbians to have rights. Um, and in fact, it's, it's going further and people are worried that they're, our rights are going to get rolled back. Talking about dealing with sexuality and how easy it's going to be, um, do you have any worries or concerns about that or do you think it's generally going to be easier or? Um, well we're certainly not seeing any effects of this perceived conservatism yet. Mm. Um, I think the youth of today are fairly ignorant if you like to the politics that are going on around the place. Right. So mm. um, for us I don't think it's going to be an issue until it, it is an issue for everyone. Mm. Um, so. I, I, don't, I don't really know how it, the country is going to go in terms of the politics, but um, we're not seeing anything happening yet. So, mm, mm. And I suppose at, at your age, you've got a lot of other issues you won't think yeah, about you, anyway. Yeah, you're not really thinking so about you know, the laws that are going on around you that concern your relationships or, or anything like that. Mm. Mm. And what about same-sex marriage? I mean, that it seems to be a hot topic at the moment. And, and interestingly, uh, a recent survey by the uh, Victorian Gay and Lesbian Rights Lobby, uh, in collaboration with other people, found uh, found an interesting point where uh, most of the people that were in support of uh, same-sex marriage uh, tended to be younger people rather than uh, older gays and lesbians who are sort of long or already in long-term relationships who have come out you know, or have dealt with their sexuality uh, a long time ago, they didn't seem to worry too much about it, whereas it was the younger people who were more concerned about uh, rights like same-sex marriage. What, do you get a sense of, of that amongst your own friends or, or people? Well, I think my age group particularly isn't really concerned with um, same-sex marriages. They've got, a, as you said, they've got a lot of other issues that they're thinking about. Mm. and. Um, they're certainly not thinking about getting married, mm. um, the majority of them anyway. And so it's, they're not really seeing that as an issue that's affecting them. Mm. And therefore, I, I don't see that they're opposed to same-sex marriage, but they're not um, thinking about getting married themselves. Mm. But, um, I mean, it's certainly an issue that they will encounter one day. Eventually, <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, what sort of support is... Uh uh, behind Rainbow Eyes getting? What, what, what uh, uh, organisations or other groups uh, are you supported by? Um, well, we're working with Gay As Expo and Breathe Events yep. and also the Also Foundation. They've been um, helping us a lot with the logistics. Um, they will be for the tour, which we'll talk about a bit later. Yep. And yep. Um, Minus 18, they're um, working with us as well. Mm -hmm. And also the City of Melbourne and Joy Melbourne. 
right. The city of Melbourne now, yeah, that's yeah. interesting. It's a, <laughs> a, a, it's a governing uh, uh, body. Yeah. Um, how did that happen? Uh, did they come to you or you went to them? Or? I went to them. Um, yeah. It's to do with the tour. They've right. um, sponsored the uh, use of the town hall right. for that. Yeah. And they're quite supportive of the group. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And now you mentioned minus 18. How different then uh, is Behind Rainbow Eyes to minus 18? Um, well, Minus 18 runs predominantly dance parties and similar events for youth. Um, we're basically going to stay away from <laughs> those kind of events, mm. um, but work with them to increase the, the diversity of the projects that they run and also the projects that we run. Mm. So, um, for example, the tour, and we're going to be running a number of other projects that aren't um, socially based. Mm. They're, um, They'll be national wide uh, to start with. And um, also, for, for example, we're going to be running a short film competition. Okay. Um, yep. Which will help with our, our sort of goal of promoting acceptance in schools and awareness in schools. Um, right. the idea will this film be shown at schools? Well, that, that's or the idea. Um, right. The winner or the, the best three or however, whatever you like, will, um, the, the category will be um, youth in schools, queer youth mm -hmm. in schools and um, the best films will hopefully be used to introduce an education program in schools mm. to increase awareness that um, same-sex attracted youth do exist. Mm. And uh, will this be a statewide or national competition? It will be national. National. Yeah. And how would people get details of that? Um, well, there isn't a lot of details at the moment. Um, it's all in planning. Yep. There's a little bit of information on our website. Um, which is rainboweyes.com.au. Um, we'll, we'll have the address up a bit later. We, we will, and we'll, we'll talk more about that uh, later. Um, I suppose what we'll do now, we'll just, uh, we've got a lot more to talk about, so we'll just go to a, a very quick break. So you're watching Face to Face, and we'll be back very shortly. there for, for someone who wants to belong to Behind Rainbow Eyes? Um, well, y anyone can be a member, basically. Mm. Um, if you want to be in involved in the committee, you need to be under 25, yep. which is the um, official youth um, age that the government sets. Oh, okay, I didn't even know that. <laughs> <laughs> is it official? Okay, yeah. all right. I'm definitely not in that category, <laughs> but... <laughs> yeah. um, and that's really the only age requirement. Um, mm. It depends on the events that we're we're running as to another age requirement um, because if we were running something in conjunction with minus 18 if we were helping them do a dance party or something mm. um, then of course the age limit would be stipulated by them yep and, and is it for gays and lesbians and absolutely other yeah yep. anyone really anyone yep, yep. um basically we are all about promoting awareness and acceptance mm. so anyone in the community is quite welcome to be a part of it and attend our events because that's what we want to do. We want to involve everyone and yep. make sure everyone knows mm. that mm. Um, we are out there. Yep, yep. No, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, but understandably, the actual committee itself, um, you, you've got that age limit. Yep. So tell us a, a bit about the committee. What's, what's the makeup of the uh, committee? Um, well, we are still looking for members. Mm. So anyone who is interested in being involved should uh, contact us. Yep. All right. um, and basically we have a number of committee members um, who just look after the organisation. Yep. Um, so does that include a, some sort of structuring like a, a prayers, vice prayers yep, yep, type of thing? Yep. Yep. Now getting back to uh, uh, I suppose yourself and, and uh, what I'd like to talk about is the issues concerning uh, youth like yourself. W what are uh, or actually even getting back earlier than that, um, when did you actually start to, to, to think about your sexuality? And I suppose the first question that we all go through is like, you know, I'm a bit different, why am I different? <laughs> um, it, it, do you remember the, how early it was? Um, well, I guess I've always known, but mm. um, I think everyone says that once they know for sure. Mm. Um, you know, they look back and realise that, oh yeah, that makes sense now. But um, I sort of really started thinking about it uh, three or four years ago. Yep. So, yeah, 
13, 14. And, and at that time and since, like you say, you've got a, a, a gay friends at school. Um, was, was there any, anyone else that, that you thought that you could relate to or had similar feelings or <laughs> so you were totally not. isolated? Yeah. Yeah, yeah which, which is a common thing most of us are at that stage. Yeah. Um, what are some of the issues then uh, that concern you or, or, or your or other uh, gays and lesbians at uh, sort of late teenage years? What, what are the main concerns or issues? Well, coming out mainly, mm -hmm. um, particularly in the younger teens, there's the perception of coming out. Even mm -hmm. if it, you know, you know, even if it goes fine, um, you know, you perceive that it's going to be one of the hardest yep. times of your life, which mm. it quite possibly will be. Mm. Um, but, you know, it, it is getting easier, mm. but the perception is out there that, like when I was in sort of year seven, year eight, when I was starting to think that, you know, I am different, mm. I would never have even thought about telling anyone, yeah. <laughs> yeah. let alone telling everyone. Mm. Mm. <laughs> um, and I would never have even thought that there were other people out there that I could talk to. Mm. Um, and you thought the only one in the world had yeah, those feelings. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and what do you think of the, the wider community? I mean, how, is, how important is it um, for other people's uh, reaction or how they respond to you? How, how important it is, uh, say particularly family, uh, um, how, we, how important is it for them to accept uh, what you're going through? Um, well, it's very important because, as you would know, it's... Um, very difficult time within yourself. Mm. Um, coming out to yourself is very hard. Um, mm. but coming out to someone else is even harder <laughs> mm. Mm. Um, because you know your whole relationship is um, could be based on this one thing that you're going to tell them, yep. and um, the potential breakdown of that relationship is something that you certainly think about. Mm. And. Um, uh, and there may be uh, people out there, young people out there watching now and thinking, you know, they're going through that sort of thing. What, there might be parents and family also watching. What's the best thing that uh, particularly immediate family can do if they have a, a, a child that sort of starts to talk about having those sort of feelings? What, what's the best thing they can do? Um, well, I think just encourage them that, you know, it's okay to be who you are. Yep. Um, I think that's the most important thing that they can do to help mm. um, their children to deal with it um, because they're, especially if they're in their younger teens, they're probably still dealing with it themselves. Mm. Um, and if they're telling their parents, they're dealing with it both at the same time. And so they've got a lot on their mind yep. and they need as much support as possible. So that's a key thing, support. And, yep. and, and that can make a big difference, can't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we mentioned um, briefly this tour, uh, the Rainbow Tour, uh, which is happening. Um, now, it's uh, Alex Sanchez is yep. the, the guy that's coming out to Australia. He's uh, American? Yep. And um, well, he's actually Mexican, but right. uh, he immigrated to America when he was young. So. And tell us a little bit about uh, Alex. Um, well, he's 48. He's worked as a counsellor um, in a number of different countries around the world. Mm. Uh, I think about 10 years ago he started writing. Yep. And he's written, he's published three books. Another one's coming out shortly in a matter of weeks, actually. Okay, yep. Um, and, so and what are these books about? Um, well, they're about gay teens. Mm. He writes for gay teens. He writes from the perspective that um, when he was young, he'd learnt to tell himself that, you know, being gay was the worst thing in the world that you could be, basically. Mm. Um, and so he writes from that view and he writes the books so that they, um, they're the books that he would have wanted when he was young mm. to tell him that, you know, it's okay to be who you are. Mm. It's not a big deal. It's not something that is bad. Um, it's not something you should beat yourself up for yep. because that's what he did. Mm. Um, and the books are basically about, there's three books, as I said, um, the two of them are, the, the third one's coming out, as I said, and that's a, they're the trilogy, the yep. Rainbow Trilogy. Um, the first one's Rainbow High, Rainbow Boys rather, uh, followed by Rainbow High, and then the uh, one coming out shortly is Rainbow Road. And there are about three gay teens in high school in yep. the US. Um, but the, the issues they face, are, um, they apply to any youth coming out. Um, 
Mm. They're very different characters. They're, there's um, one which is very flamboyant and he's out to the whole school and there's one who's a jock and he's mm. got a girlfriend even mm. at the start of the story. Mm. And then there's another one who's sort of quiet and athletic um, and he's only out to one of his friends. Mm. And it's about them coming out to themselves, uh, to each other, to their families and ultimately to everyone else around them in mm. school mm. and issues that they go through. Um, for example, HIV. Uh, one of the characters encounters that in the story. Right. Yep. And um, they encounter different reactions from teachers, mm. from students, their families um, and everyone. And it's about how they deal with them, how they interact with each other and how they interact with their families is certainly something that is covered. Um, All right. And, and the, so it sounds like the, the, they're excellent books for uh, for youth to read, yeah. but also perhaps for parents as well, or anyone else who, who wants to get an understanding or yeah, an insight I think, into I think what that's it's right. like. Um, mm. The books would help you learn a lot about what goes on in uh, the minds of gay teens. Mm. Um, the, the chapters in the books are actually one for each character, yep. so the, the three main characters. So yep. one is Nelson, one is Kyle, and one is Jason, yep. and they go from like they narrate the chapters basically, yep. and yep. they say, tell the, the reader their thoughts um, and what happens obviously mm. in the plot. Mm. Um, so it's, uh, they sound fascinating, and and I, I'd probably assume that they're available at uh, at um, at certain bookstores. Yep, they're uh, available at, the at um, mainstream bookstores as and well. Yep, local libraries have them as well. All right. Um, that, with the tour, where, when's that happening? It's January in yep. two thousand six and February. Yep. Um, we'll be in Melbourne on the 21st of January. 21st of January, yep. yep. At the Melbourne Town Hall. Yep. Uh, tickets are available on our website. Yep. And also from the Also Foundation. All right. Um, so with the website, you, you've got a, a, a website and we'll have the address of the website up any moment now. Um, and the website address is? It's rainboweyes.com.au. And you can also purchase Alex's books from our website. Okay, um, right. There's a small yeah. fee for postage, of course. Yep. And um, so that will also help us with our fundraising efforts to fund the tour. Yep. We are going nationally and it's yep. going to be rather expensive. So mm. we do need as much help as we can get. Yep. Well, good luck. Um, and everyone out there, support uh, Behind Ra Rainbow Eyes. And uh, as Michael said, the tour is coming up 21st of January in Melbourne. Uh, tickets, uh, uh, you're able to get tickets as well as books off the website and the website address should be up on the screen now. Um, that's all for now. Thanks very much for coming in, Michael. Thank you. And uh, you've been watching Face to Face. I'm Vic Perry. And of course, don't forget Monday night, uh, more of Ben TV. Every Monday and Thursday nights, we're on uh, Channel 31. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>